So as I sort of mentioned to you, our listeners and our audience are looking for ways to improve themselves so that they can best serve others in their lives. I think that that is at the key of the message that you put out there through the Love Eternal uh, message and you know even through what you're doing right now with the stay home thing, with the No Child Hungry, with the song. Um, I think you know, it it just, you always are doing good for others. Okay. And I, have seen your live chats on Instagram. I've seen you doing, you know, that you're doing the zoom calls. It's really special. But I think the question is, if I can go deeper than that stuff is what is your daily life like so that you personally can perform on the level you are to serve others? What are your routines? What are the secrets, so to speak, that we could extrapolate from you to share with others that they might be able to adopt into their own lives? Because I think you're one of the people who I've encountered who has really mastered selflessness. But in order to be selfless, you have to really be in control of your mind, your body, your health. Um, and a lot of those things. So that's kind of where I want to steer the conversation initially is hearing sort of what you do from a health standpoint, fitness standpoint, mental wellness standpoint, diet standpoint. I mean, anything that you can share um, actively that you do would be really helpful. So I guess that's where I would turn it over to you. All right. Well, yeah, shit. Um, you know, thank you for the kind words. Um you know, I think the the thing that um, I I've learned in life is that you know, um, and first of all, let me be really frank. It's all a struggle, man. You know, it's nobody um, wakes up and is just perfect. Nobody goes through a day without struggling, and and um, you know, and we don't always know why, you know, sometimes I wake up a typical day for me, since you phrased it that way, what do I do? A typical day for me is, you know, I wake up and sometimes I wake up and I'm just like, oh, life is great. And sometimes I wake up and I feel like shit and I have no idea why. I feel terrible. I don't know why. I feel depressed. I feel, you know, not myself. And, um, you know, I, I, I can immediately, if I don't check in with myself, I can immediately start attaching that to other people like my wife, my kid, you know, or my dog, you know, it's like, I can, I can, one of my band mites, I might look at my phone. There's a text from one of them. It might annoy me. And because I'm already in an annoyed state. So like, did they annoy me or did I annoy myself? Right. So immediately I just try to wake up and immediately start the day with gratitude. You know, I just, I say, dude, you're breathing, you're alive, you're awake. Um, you know, be thankful, be thankful, no matter what's going on, just be thankful. And, you know, a lot of that stuff that I think we stress out about and that we deal with really has nothing to do with the present moment, right? It's, it's, Typically, we get stressed out, we get freaked out about something that happened in our life, in our past, in our childhood that we don't even know. You know, somebody might say something to us with a certain tone of voice that we then attach a meaning to. Like, why'd you talk to me like that? You're talking to me like I'm a dog, right? That could be because it reminded us of something subconsciously that our dad said to us 40 years ago, right? So, Stay so the, the the thing taking it back. I'm sorry if I jump all over the place, but it's it is a process, right? It's a constant every moment to moment process of staying awake. I call it. So in the morning, I wake up. I feel bad. I gotta wake up. Wake up from. Thank you, love. Love you. Um, like me and Jenny. Jenny just dropped me off a protein shake. Um, we call it being awake. Like when you're, when our minds are, are not right, when we're mad at people, when we're in that state where we can't, you know, break out of a, a depression or a funk or whatever, and I'm not talking about clinically depressed people and people who are, you know, diagnosed with stuff, but just the rest of us who just ride these roller coasters too, we call it being awake. So when I get up in the morning and I feel a certain way, I'm not awake. 
You know, I'm not awake. I'm not awake to the fact that all is well in this moment. I'm either worried about something I got to do or stressed about something I dreamt about or just waking up feeling like crap. So I, I take a minute to sort of wake myself up by being thankful, right? By just saying, thank you. You know, all is good. I make sure that before I reach for my phone, I kiss my wife, tell her I love her. You know, I just start on a positive note with everything because that first information I let into my life, if I'm in a weird state when I wake up, it's going to cause a roller coaster and a snowball. And, and by the end of the day, I'm gone, right? I don't even know who I am anymore because I'm asleep, you know? So um, in that term, awake really covers a lot of things. Like for, um, if you listen to Eckhart Tolle, for example, he'll talk about, you know, and he's great person to listen to. Sure. Um, you know, wanna, sometimes me and Jenny, like if we're just in a weird state, we're not talking right. I'm in a mood, she's in a mood. We might be mad at each other for nothing. And we realize one of us is asleep or we're both asleep. So we'll literally say, like, let's go listen to Eckhart Tolle. Like, let's get present. Like, we're, we're, we're not here. We're not awake. And um, so everything that I do is about being awake. And really, until I'm awake um, in, in the present moment, it's all a crapshoot. I may not be selfless. I may not be loving. And what really is the key to it, Matt, and I hope this makes sense, um, is I'm probably not loving myself, right? So I wake up feeling like crap. I walk in the bathroom. I feel like crap. I look in the mirror. I look like crap, you know, and everything just spirals downward. And I just don't feel good about myself because I don't feel good because I'm not awake. You know, I'm not spiritually awake, I'm not mentally awake, I'm not physically awake, nothing, right? Um, I'm just in this funk. And um, that self-love is a weird thing for a lot of people because, you know, we hear it and it's like, what does that mean? What is self-love? It's, you know, put yourself first. What does that even mean? That's selfish. That's the antithesis of, of selfless, right? If that's the right word, yes. this. I'm reaching in the I'm reaching in the vocabulary Rolodex. No, I got it. We got it. Yeah, right. But that from the moment I get up, that sort of check in and gratitude, it all starts a ro- a a sort of path of self love. And when I say self love, like you know, working out is self love. You know, making yourself feel good. Um, you know, um, being good to yourself, you know, doing the things you need to be the best person you could be for yourself allows you to be selfless and to give to others. It's like that weird thing on the airplane where they say, if the plane loses oxygen, put your mask on before your kids. Well, I'm a dad. I'm like, I got to do everything for my kids first, but I can't help them if I can't breathe. Right. So it's, so it's that mentality. It's like, that doesn't mean I'm all about myself and yada, yada. But when I'm not feeling good, when I'm not feeling right, I have to make sure I do things to help myself feel better. That might be a workout. That might be read a book, listen to uh, uh, um, one of our gurus that we like, meditate, um, do whatever I can to take a shower. Sometimes I take a shower because I don't shower a lot. I'm not a shower guy. I don't I'm, I'm, I'm kind yes. of not the cleanest dude in the world, right? There you go. <laughs> um, but when I take a shower after like, you know, a week, I'm like, oh, that felt really good. I must have needed it. I feel rejuvenated. I feel uh, with self-love. You know, it's like, okay, good. Um, self-love and, and staying present allows me to then think of other people, to then, you know, give to other people and do for other people and realize, you know, because that staying in the present moment reminds us of what's really important is right here, right now. Only thing in the world right now is me, Justin, Jordan, and Matt. That's it. I'm right here. I'm nowhere else. I'm not next week. I don't, I'm not at the end of the quarantine. I'm not, you know, what the hell's going on with Wahlburgers? We got 31 restaurants closed. It's nothing. I'm right here, right now with you guys. Um, trying to get present and, and stay within my thoughts, you know, and, um, and tap into the stuff that I need to, to answer your questions and be helpful to the people that you're trying to help and provide a service for. I don't know if all that makes sense. No, it does. And I can get more specific, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a couple things. So we, we talk a lot about gratitude, which I, I love that that is something that, that you're sharing because it helps 
to hear it from more and more people that gratitude Number practice one. Number is one, man. it's yeah it's extremely important and and we all practice it and we all try to share that idea to people um and then also doing things on a daily basis to stay within the present to to as one of our recent guests called it to to get into the flow right to to find that flow and that focus of the present um that's something that we talk about a lot so again the reinforcement is really helpful um there's something yeah, that you, I, go ahead flow being awake that we call it being awake yeah the same thing I'm yeah guessing you, that's the exact absolutely no it, it it is and and there's what's cool about it is that i think there are so many different methods to quote unquote wake yourself up like you were describing, right? And there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, and we've talked a lot about different methods, but there, there's something that I want to um, kind of cue up Jordan to, to bring up because it was a question that, that we were actually talking about yesterday that we weren't really sure if we were going to address, but I think it actually is, um, I think it's worth bringing up because, you know, you mentioned that when, sometimes you wake up in the morning like all of us and we don't feel like ourselves, we don't feel right. And we have to then serve other people. Um, and sometimes we experience this thing called imposter syndrome. Uh, and I'll let Jordan kind of take it from here. But I think that's something that's that's worth bringing up for sure. Yeah, well, well, look, uh, just hearing you already, Donnie, I can tell um, kind of some of the ingredients to your success. It seems like you have a lot of self-awareness and it seems like you have cultivated a ton of self-compassion. Right? I think it's really, really important uh, for people paying attention who may put someone like you on a pedestal, hear someone like you say, you know what, some mornings I wake up and I feel like shit. Some mornings I may wake up and I may be hard on myself. Uh, that is honest. And I think when we can be most honest with ourselves, that's when we can actually work with ourselves to cultivate that self-love and ultimately to give to others and to be successful in however we want. Um, so the, the, the concept of, um, feeling like an imposter, uh, it really resonated with our Facebook group yesterday. And I'm curious, someone like you who has had a, a ton of success in all kinds of different mediums, uh, do you experience that? Do you ever have thoughts that start like, who am I to do something? Who am I to be doing this right now? Who am I to say this? Um, does that show up for you? If so, how and how can then you respond in a more mindful way to bring yourself back to being awake? Right. Um, <clears throat> when you say, who am I to, to say this? You mean like, who am I to like give advice to people or just anything in general? Sure. Look, for us, the three of us, we could, you, we could say, uh, who are we to have the audacity uh, to start a podcast like this, sharing our truth and our wisdom? Um, yeah. those, those thoughts yeah. okay. could get in the way from us being of value to people who yes. may resonate with us. Yeah. I would say that those thoughts, of course I have them. Um, and those thoughts are, I would describe as that's, that's my ego. And most people think of ego as, you know, I'm so great. I'm awesome. Da, 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 da. Ego is in fact, the opposite. The ego is that voice that tells us, we're not good enough. It tells us, wow, you know, Matt's looking at me like he's judging me. Um, you know, our ego's goal, that voice in our head that tells us, that judges everyone else, that tells us that, you know, um, you, that wants to destroy everything in our life and have us alone in a room with the door closed and the shades drawn. And, and you know, our ego wants to put us there. And then when it gets us there, it'll say to us, you idiot, look what you did to us, right? That's what the ego's, its job is to destroy everything in your life and to protect you, right, from all these things. So I would say in my vocabulary, the imposter is the ego, right? And um, because why are you doing this podcast, right? It didn't come from you guys saying, oh, we're going to make billions. We're going to do, it's like you did it because you're vibing one day, you're talking and you went with the spirit. You know, you were with the, you were in the flow, you were awake, right? So you did it and you did it from a pure place, right? So to me, it's really when you do something for love, there's, you can't fail, 
you know, um, my friend D nice is doing club quarantine. It's become this huge thing. And I just write him a note every now and then and say, you know, everything you do for love, you always win. And if you do stuff for the right reasons, yeah, you know, that, that imposter voice comes on those times when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, when you don't self love, when you don't help yourself. Um, for me also, a lot of times, um, you know, like I write a lot of, we, we call them words of wisdom. My fans actually named it that on Twitter and stuff. Like I'll write a tweet about, you know, um, something. A lot of times I write those for myself. You know, I, I, I might be in the van on the way to Blue Bloods. I feel like crap. I haven't woken up yet and I'm trying to tune into what I'm feeling. And I might be holding a grudge with someone for something, or I might, you know, whatever it is, I don't know. But a lot of times I write it as a daily reminder for me. And when I'm honest about that and put it out there, what I find is other people respond well to it. You know, I'll go on Twitter and see everyone's response. And it's like, how do you always know what I needed to hear? It's like, because I needed to hear it. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, we're all mirrors for each other. Right. Um, you know, um, we gravitate towards similar spirits, good and bad. You know, if you're uh, if you're in a pissed off mood and you want to vent about politics, who are you going to call? You're going to call the people that like to vent about politics. You're going to go towards the clique, right, um, that does that. Um, and in this, like, why did Matt reach out to me? Because we've, we've been around each other. He's aware of who I am and what I do. I know his energy, you know, from the first moment I ever met you, man, you walked into the room and it was like a, a moment as a dad. Cause you know, my son was supposed to go to your drum camp yep. and he didn't go. He got scared. He was intimidated, mm. which was, was his imposter voice yeah. telling him, no, I can't go to, to Matt's drum camp. And I was like, why aren't you going dude? Like this guy's, this is what you want to do. You want to drum, you should go. He was like, I know, but I'm not good enough. I said, well, let's why it's a camp you're going to learn from a, a great things and see where you are and give you pointers to get better like it's you don't have to go in and be the best but you know his imposter voice was talking him out of it and so when matt came in the room and said someone was supposed to come to my drum camp today and didn't show up like i loved it as a dad because a it told me as a man who you are that you knew enough to pay attention and even care you know, you, you know, and it, and my son saw that he saw, wow, this guy's down to earth. Like I'm embarrassed. I didn't go, but now I realized, you know, this guy who I thought I would let down by being a bad drummer might've been let down by me not showing up. Yeah. Right. And that, that's a whole nother thing of, uh, imposter stuff. Jordan is like, we manifest our own worst fears, you know? And when we listen to that imposter voice, we can destroy ourselves, right? So um, what I mean is it's like, look at our country right now. You know, it's, it's um, you know, we're, we're like going through this pandemic, but the, the politics in Washington are so split and it, rather than trying to help everybody now, they're splitting even further and everything's, you know, what have we become? We've become everything that everyone feared we would be. If you're on the right, you're afraid we're going to, um, you know, have a bad economy, you know, uh, you're afraid we're going to turn into like a dictatorship where we're locked in our houses and can't go out. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, um, you know, we got protests, like everything, both sides are manifesting their worst fears and look at what we've become, mm -hmm. you know, um, for, for people who don't understand Islam or other cultures, like, you know, how ironic we all have to walk around with masks on now. You know, it's like we're, we're, you know, and it's not, and, and trust me, I'm very aware of Islam. You know, I've, I've read about Islam and studied about Islam. I'm not um, trying to sound insulting to it. I'm trying to say the irony of people who don't, don't understand that, you know, and say, why do they wear those masks? Well, now we're wearing our own kind of masks, right? It's all these, we manifest our worst fears in the big picture and in the small picture every day. It's like, if I walk, um, if I'm afraid to fail or if I walk into a room thinking people aren't going to like me and I let my imposter voice lead the way, they're not going to like me right. most likely because I'm not being my authentic self. Right. Right. So I can 
we can so that ego voice or that imposter voice is it's such a detrimental thing and it will force us to manifest our biggest fears if we don't you know um confronted like in a relationship you know i'm afraid my girl's cheating on me i'm afraid my girl's cheating on me i call her every day every five minutes checking up on her what am i gonna do i'm gonna drive her crazy right she's gonna find some other guy who actually isn't gonna be such a jerk right and we'll trust her you know i don't know if that that really fully addresses (laughs) the my thoughts on the imposter voice but no it does and it it reminds so the way i look at that especially hearing your uh interpretation of it is self-doubt right um, and there's a there's a quote that I brought up many times before on this podcast, but I think it's good to revisit it. Which is, it's a Shakespeare quote, which is, "Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt." And that's a lot to break down. But a long and short of it is, if you let that imposter syndrome, that ego, that self doubt get in the way of what you want to do, you're going to lose a hundred percent. But the likelihood that you will at least get to the next step or succeed if you get past that and try, it, it's pretty great that you're going to get to that next step. The doubt, yep. if you let it take over, 100% you're going to fail, right? Like yep. you said, you're, if you keep feeding that, you're going to get the result you keep feeding. But if you push past it and you do things for the right reasons because of passion, love, authenticity, there's, there's a good chance – you're going to get to that next step and the next step and succeed. Even if it's small wins, you'll, con- you'll continue to win. Um, so it's, it's good to hear your interpretation of that because, again, these are things that people need right now. They need little wins on a daily basis. They need to try to push themselves for themselves to be better for others. And again, that's really what we've been discussing so much these past weeks given the pandemic, given the situation, the changes. Um, and rather than getting involved, and I'm glad you brought it up, it's not something I'm, I'm avoiding at all, but rather than, than get involved in that left and right conversation, let's avoid that completely and let's give people tools so that they can form their own opinions and be themselves and determine how they can be the best people they can be during this this hard time. So, uh, Justin, go, go for it. What were you going to say? Yeah. I just quickly wanted to, you know, let me first start off. I don't feel like I've expressed enough gratitude today. So let me express gratitude, Donnie, for you being here, Matt and Jordan as well, uh, and everyone who's going to listen to this, uh, you know, just all the gratitude in the world. Uh, I'm just extremely grateful. Uh, And and I I wanted to uh, use a little mantra that goes through my head often. uh, If if I'm feeling stress, if I'm feeling the imposter syndrome, if I'm, I'm uncomfortable in a situation, there's a quote from a guy, Jesse Itzler, who says, uh, you didn't come this far to only come this far. And it always reminds me that when I'm in the present, when I'm when I'm awake and, and ready to go, hey, I didn't come this far to only come this far. There's still more to go. I need to keep pushing myself. And I'm, I'm really curious, when you feel that self-doubt, if you do feel that, that imposter syndrome, do you have any mantras that you say to yourself or any quotes or anything you, you might read to yourself, you know, that the little wisdom nuggets that, that you're pulling from, uh, is there anything yeah. specifically that you say to yourself? Well, I have a similar uh, mantra to that that I write on Twitter a lot, which is basically whatever the topic is, it'll, you know, I'll basically remind people and remind myself, you know, um, you're go- you'll make it through, always do. And the reason I say you always do and specify that is because, you know, we do hit these moments where we think, uh it's like a wall, right? It's like a thing. And it's like, it, I'm 50. If I look back, there's probably a 1 million occasions in my life where I didn't think I could make it through something, or I dreaded what was happening, or I was afraid to take that step or try something, as Matt said. It could be as simple as not asking a girl on the train for her phone number in high school, and it might still remember, y'all still remember it. Um, but I've always made it through, you know, it's sort of like uh, another one is, you know, remember that time you were so happy you forgot all the problems in the world. That's it. That's it. Powerful. Because because what was different? I was happy. I was in a good mood. So there was nothing else. Or you could say, you know, remember that time you were laughing so hard you forgot all your problems? Exactly. Right. It's like. We can forget all that because it's not of the present moment, right? So all this stress, it's like 
I always say another one, the only stress is stress. You know, um, stress is not real. Stress is created by our thoughts and, and the, the imposter voice, right? And, 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 and this stuff, not having tools in the toolbox to cope is where the stress gets us, right? So when I say tools, you know, there's no one specific thing I can point to to where I um, sort of evolved into who I am. It's multiple points. You know, um, going through a divorce was a big thing for me because I went to therapy all the time and this therapist would give me these jewels that made no sense at the time. And I'd be like, what are you talking about, man? Like, this makes no sense. And um, like he'd say, you know, I'd like, I think my uh, my soon-to-be ex is out seeing another guy. He was like, oh, that's great. Good for her. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> he'd be like, yeah. I said, well, I sh- she should tell me. She shouldn't keep it a secret. He's like, no, it's none of your business. And I was like, well, what I do is her business. He was like, yeah, it's none of your business, what she does. And I, I didn't get that. And, you know, but now I get it. Now I get it. It, it. I get it in the most basic terms. What my wife is doing in the other room, it really is none of my business. It's it, Hopefully she loves me enough to share it with me when she wants to, and that's all I can control, right? There's that, um, but the, but it's really about that control. And, and all this stuff we're talking about, there is one thing that I've assessed through this whole quarantine and what I realized early on with this what the, I think the best takeaway is, is about control. Um, we control two things on this planet as individuals, our body and what comes out of our mouth. Now, there's some of us who can't control either, you know, and that's completely understandable. That's a whole nother situation. But for those who are able-bodied and you know, um, aren't clinically diagnosed with stuff where they can't control what comes out of their mouth. We can control those two things and nothing else. And we are in control when we tune into that, when we go inside to solve what's bothering us rather than outside. So if I wake up again, I wake up feeling like shit, check in. I got to check in with myself, go meditate for a second. And if, you know, and some of this stuff sounds weird, but it could be as simple as take a beat, and get honest with yourself. Like, why do you feel bad right now? Right? Just take a beat because that's all I can control. I can't control my kids. I can't control my dog, wife, my job, the pandemic. I can't control any of that. And when I try to, I lose control of the only thing on earth I can can control, me. And there's no better teacher for that than this pandemic. Like, well, I want to go outside and open my restaurant down the street. I can't. Who's going to come? Everyone's in their house locked up. Like, you know, I want to go outside and have a normal life again. Okay, great. Go out the front door and do it. But there's nothing out there. There's nothing you can do that's normal, right? Other than exercise and, you know, do the certain things you can do. So you can't do it anyway. So what can you do? Is control me, you know, control myself, control how I react, to what's going on around me rather than try to control what's going on around me. It's about the reactions to what's going on and I can control my reaction, but I can only control it if I arm myself with tools in my toolbox. You know, um, Matt, you can't play the drums without your tools. You know, you need your tools. You can play the bongos, but that ain't going to sound right at a periphery concert, right? You need your (laughs) drumsticks. You need your tools. Those are your tools of the trade. Well, we need tools also to help us every single day. <clears throat> and those tools, tools are acquired information, like people watching this. If they get one nugget of help, that could be as simple as the next six mornings they might wake up and say, I heard what Jordan and Justin and Matt and Donnie said about waking up in the morning, but I, I, it feels weird. I'm not doing it. But on day six, they finally do it. That little spark could lead to the next thing yeah. and again as i said it's a struggle so like i could wake up and do that and two hours later i might feel like crap you know and why is it physiological is my allergies acting up um do i have a hangover you know do i need to get some physical workout and you know sweat and get my endorphins up like there's all different 
times throughout the day. And that's, that's the thing, Matt, like when we started this, it's like, you know, there's no right or wrong answer to any of this. It's just, just keep trying to check in with yourself and to not act out on others. And that's the best mindfulness and selflessness that you could do is to say, um, you know, it, some, I'm not right right now. I feel not right. I'll give you one weird example. It, it, sorry if I talk too much. Um, not at all. We have a little basement gym over here in the next room. And one day I was in the gym, and Jenny was on the treadmill, and she's watching her weird alien videos on the phone. She really loves alien stuff. And, you know, um, like guys who have been, like, been abducted in spaceships and stuff. Um, and I'm working out. I'm watching my sports, and I'm working out, and I feel great. And I looked over at her, and I was like, I felt so much love. I just loved her so much. And the very next day, we're in the gym. And I didn't feel right. And I looked over at her doing the same thing as the day before. And I like, was like, what's she doing on her phone? Like, what's going on? Like, why is she always into this alien shit? Like, <laughs> and and I, I, I wanted to say something. But I had the tools. One of the tools I have is find the space in between. Yeah. And what that means is when you have a thought insecurity your imposter voice says something you, you you're afraid to try something all those fears when a thought pops up or a judgment of someone else stop before you act on it before you open your mouth find the space in between from here to here to stop and say whoa what's going on and i found the space in between in that moment and i said all right dude i don't know what's going on with you but you were in the same gym, in the same clothes, in the same exact space, looking at your wife do the same exact thing 24 hours ago. Why is it a problem now, but when you were in a good mood, it was totally great? What's changed? It's not her. It's nothing. It's you. You've changed. What is it? Get in touch with that. Find out what it is. And, and let's work through this right now. And, and if I can't work through it alone, I could tell my wife. You know, you'd be surprised how telling someone, your boyfriend, your, your, your spouse, your kids, anyone, that you're going through that. So I literally sat down for a minute and, and laughed at myself after a minute. I was like, wow, it really is crazy. It's just me. I've, I, I'm in a different mental space today and I'm not awake. And that taking that time woke me up mm. and I went over and told Jenny what happened and she like that vulnerability of sharing that with her it's opened a new doorway in our relationship to be vulnerable with each other and to share those things you know it's like now she's like wow and now she can also identify and I have that look and she'll go are you in that weird space right now now our egos and our imposters are really smart you know, when you share that, when when the ego, I say, is always looking for new food, yeah. right? It looks for a new angle. So when you share that, and, and now my wife, we call it, she's going to reach through the barbed wire. She sees me with that weird look on my face when I'm in that asleep state, right? And I'm not ready to admit it yet. <clears throat> and she'll reach through the barbed wire, risking me getting mad and say, are you okay? Are you in that state right now? Now... The ego is so clever, it'll it'll then say to me, oh, I told you about that, and now you think I'm always in that, <laughs> right? If I respond with defense, she knows I'm in it. And if I'm honest and I can wake up, any defense admits to her that I'm in it. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yep. I, um, I experienced something similar <laughs> to that last night without getting into it, but vulnerability is a, is a conversation actively in my marriage. You know, I'm, these guys will tell you I'm an open book. I wear my heart and my feelings on my sleeve. I need to remind myself that not everybody is like that. Um, at the same time, there needs to, uh, to, to, you have to try to find a balance with a person to, um, make it welcoming and open the door so that they can express vulnerability and come to you. And that's, that's something that I'm working on right now with my wife is figuring out the best way to position myself so that she can really share certain things. Because what, what, and long story short, what ended up happening was, you know, we've kind of been cruising, doing our routines, doing our thing. 
Um, but I didn't know that she was personally going through some things for herself, not even about our relationship. And um, we, we started talking about something completely different. And of course, you know how these things go. One thing leads to the other. And then it's like, well, what you need to realize is this is what I've been dealing with. And it only comes out in that explosive moment instead of in a calm moment where like you went to Jenny and said, Hey, let me tell you what, what was happening. It's hard, man. I'm it's trying tough. to, it's, it's tough. tough. To it's very that, tough, man. but I want her to feel like she can come to me in those moments and say, Hey, let me tell you what I'm going through. And I basically was like, look, I'll, if you need an ear, I'll be an ear. If you want a soundboard, I'll, I'll be a soundboard. If you want me to help you go through something, I'll help you. But know that like, I'll drop it. I'll drop what anything, you know, if you're, if you want to express something. So it's, it's, uh, serendipitous that you bring that particular story up because I definitely can relate to it and it's something that is very fresh um, that that I'm looking to, to cultivate in, in my marriage as well because yeah. it is very important communication is everything and that's something that we're trying to to relay in in our conversations here and, and that's how it started it's funny you mentioned like where did this begin well we started in a basement working out together hanging out having really good conversations that we felt like we're helping each other. And then we said, Hey, maybe this can help other people. Let's just give it a go and publish these conversations. And here we are many, many conversations later, um, talking with you and, you know, it, it's a beautiful evolution in that sense. But the, the, the message has always been how, you know, what can we do to give somebody that one nugget or more? Uh -huh. That you mentioned, yeah. you know, that's always yeah. been it. And you can give it to them. It's up to them to take it. You know, that's the other thing too. Um, but on another note, um, one thing too, that I think is important is, you know, uh, forgiving ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. um, forgiveness is, is a real release in general, you know, forgiving, like Jenny keeps saying, all's forgiven in quarantine. Like if we have a, because <laughs> we, we don't, we didn't, we never argue, right? And all of a sudden quarantine, we're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Um, you know, um, we're, we're not being ourselves. We didn't really argue, but we were tense, you know, there's little tensions happening. Um, and, but in truth, like, let's say the thing with your wife, Matt, it's like, you know, when, when stuff like that happens, we, we can dig such a, a hole for ourselves. So it's like, um, you know, she says, um, I, I wish you realized something was going on with me. That can activate a guilt and a shame in you that now you can't get out of it. So instead of being, oh, okay, baby, sorry, I didn't know. It's like now you're like, well, shit, is she going to be holding a grudge against me because I'm not aware? You know, it's like we got to forgive ourselves, whether it's um, when you guys were talking about like not taking a step, you know, not taking a chance, um, you know, uh, or, or being afraid and let yourself talk yourself out of trying something new. Like even that we have to forgive ourselves. If you can, if you could take that nugget out of today, like my son didn't do the drum thing, right? My hope is that he forgave himself. You know, because because it's the, the beauty of all this is it's never too late to make everything OK. Yeah. Right. This 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 moment might be a mess, but the next present moment can be OK if I can get out of this mess right now in my mind. Right. And so forgiveness, um, you know, there's a because I'm an empath, I can understand what a lot of people go through. Like my son, I knew what he felt like being scared to go to the drum class. I know what he felt like. You know, I also know I've done that, too, in my life. So I saw him. I said, wow, that's happened to me before. But I came out OK because I knew the next time I won't make that mistake again, you know. Um, and, and, and so and, and hopefully, um, you know, forgiving ourselves is really important because if we don't forgive ourselves, the story, like I said, the ego wants new food. It's always looking for its next meal to keep us in this state of defense and, and anger and, and being asleep. Um, that forgiveness is critical because you can have a, a disagreement with somebody, your bandmate, your friend, you know, Justin Jordan. You guys have a disagreement and all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're good. We're good. 
we're good. Let's. I understand where you come from. I understand where you come from. And then one of you could walk away thinking like, "Damn, this is gonna mess up our friendship." You know, I, I fucked up. You know, I hope he's not. Uh, he's gonna be always thinking now from now on. Whenever this happens, he's gonna be thinking that I'm thinking of. I'm doing what he thought I was doing. You gotta let it go. You gotta forgive yourself and forgive the other person and go forward. It's the only way to free yourself to stay present and stay awake and stay, you know, uh, healthy mentally. You know, it's it's critical. It's another critical element of it. That's why I say it's like it's a process all day long. And it's not, um, it's not, I don't want to say it's work or complicated, but you got to keep checking in. And in, in, in the more tools you can acquire in your toolbox, you could say, oh, this is one of those times where a you know, I'm hearing something from someone and I'm taking it personal. You know, same joke, different day, but now it's bothering me. You know, you ever, you've, we've all had that happen, right? Where you do something with a friend and you're like, I do this all the time. I never bothered you any other time. And, and all of a sudden it's a big rift. Yeah, you know, well, this time it bothers me. And da, 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 right? It's like, it, it's, that means they're in a mood right now, you know, but you can't really blame them. You just have to accept it understand it and and move on and and just and, and forgive yourself and them and just keep carrying on i don't know if that made any sense but <laughs> totally man yeah made total sense i think it's important for all of us to uh to to be vulnerable enough uh you know to share that we all struggle with things you know i think that gives others space to realize it's okay to struggle i mean look i i know from my perspective i'm never looking for perfection because perfection is this intangible that doesn't really exist i don't know what perfection is but i'm always just looking for progress and and i'm and i'm always trying to create that space uh, for my circle, for for my friends, for my fiance, everyone, you know, we're all just trying to progress. And and I always tell people that, and I try, I have to remind myself that if we never give up, we can't fail. You know, so if we just keep showing up and putting the work in, it's it's just so important. You know, you, you just can't give up on any of this stuff. Uh, one point, Donnie, that you made, um, I think it's important to when sometimes when you look over at your loved one or you look at your friends who you love. To, to tell them, you know, to, to, to let them know. I think that's something, uh, an opportunity I feel like I sometimes miss out on. You know, sometimes we go the other way where we're having these crazy thoughts of what's that person doing or, you know, what's going on with their phone or what's that alien what they show they're thinking, thinking yeah, about? Yeah, you know, are they going to abduct me? What's going on? I'm a little confused here, you know. But uh, I've, I've, I've had the same moments that you're having. My fiance and I, we've, we've, been, we've been ripping it up in the garage gym, and uh, it's a very special moment to, to be able to, to share that together. Uh, and, and Jordan, as my brother, we over the years have had uh, a, a lot of um, maybe miscommunications or just not knowing how to communicate the best way with one another. And, and it really took years of being able to find and create that space for one another and, and knowing what each other needs in different moments for us to be as close as we are. And I always say, my brother is, Jordan over here is, is my best friend. He's my favorite person. You know, he's, he's the man. I'm, I'm so glad he's my, my big brother. And, you know, it, it, without creating that space and, and cultivating that relationship and, and nurturing that relationship, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah, it takes work, you know, and that's, that's like these misconceptions people have. And it's it's very eloquently said by you. Uh, you. To add to it, uh, you know, me and Jenny, like, we work on our relationship. Like, I work in my band on the, the, the relationships with the guys. Like, if I keep having one guy who I keep bumping into, you know, um, with disagreements, I can't change him. I got to change me. I have to adapt. You know, that stubbornness to say, I can't. I'm not changing who I am. He got to change. It's never going to happen. It's never, ever going to happen. It's, it's, I have to change. And what you learn is when you make the change, it invites them to change back. They say, oh, wow. Suddenly he's like, not telling me what I'm going to do anymore. He's asking me if I'm interested in doing this. And not only that, he's asking me, what am I interested in doing, period? And so suddenly I've adapted who I am. And it invites the other person to change. But the reason I say that is going back to what you said is, you know, people have this, this sort of this, these beliefs that like life is supposed to be like a, a, a movie score, you know, a relationship that where's the violins, man, where's the happy music at the end of the movie? Like, 
But that's when I know I found the one. There's no violins, man. There's no violins. There's no score. There's no, you know, tearful, happy ending. There's, but the way you can achieve something like that is through the work. Like you and your brother have crafted and cultivated and nurtured your relationship throughout the years, right? Yep. We're hopefully all doing that with our significant others. Um, but Jenny and I proudly say, like, I- I've been in dating people and whatever, and they've said, like, relationships shouldn't be work. It shouldn't be work. It should be easy. But but everything that we love in life, our careers, our crafts, the things that we are, got really good at, we worked our asses off yeah. and gave it so much time and attention and love and dedication. Why wouldn't we do that for our main relationship? Absolutely. Of course it's work. Of course you should work on it. And the work, being okay with the work and embracing the work is what will allow you to grow. Like I said, it will allow you to have that moment of I'm working on myself for this relationship because I love my partner so much. And it, and when my partner sees me working on myself, she'll take the baton and work on herself. It's mm-hmm. going to allow her the freedom and the space to be vulnerable back. Right. Now, if you have a person who doesn't do that, you have two choices. You can say, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to keep working on me and I love you anyway, even if you don't even talk to me 20, 20 days out of a month. Or you can leave the situation. It doesn't mean you don't love them. It just means you love yourself and you want something different, right? Um, but speaking of the work, there's a, another guru who Jenny and I use a lot. It's, it's tricky stuff, but there's some great videos um, online you can watch. It's, uh, her name's Byron Katie. And Byron Katie is, um, her, her thing is called the work. Mm. Basically, um, it's about judgment. And, and I kind of explain it like this to people. Um, you know how they say, like, uh, our eyes see things upside down or cameras, you know, the image comes in the camera upside down and then it flips, yeah. right? Our lenses see things upside down and then it flips to right side up in our brain um, through whatever process in the eyeballs. Our mounts work the same way in reverse. And what I mean is this. Get up in the morning, you don't feel good, you don't like yourself, right? I'm going to the fridge, I look over at my wife, whatever, and I, you know, I go, you think I look like shit today, don't you? <laughs> You think I'm? You think that was stupid? Or anytime you do something like that, that's a projection, yeah. right? But if you think about it, and this is what the work is, it's actually the truth is the total opposite. It's I think I look like shit, so I have the thought I think I look like shit right now. It leaves my mind. It goes down here. It's about to come out of my mouth, and by the time it gets here, it's flipped upside down and put onto someone else. Yeah. Project everything onto other people. Yep. We project everything, right? You can look at and not to bring up politics, but look at every politician. They all blame each other for what they're all doing. All of them, right? It's all projection. Um, we project so much stuff, and the work is a way to turn the judgments around back to yourself. And and so it's basically it's uh, four questions in a turnaround. And what the questions are is like. So, um, Matt, you might have said something to me at the beginning, of, or, or my wife. My wife might have said, go take out the trash. And I might say, um, Jenny speaks to me with disrespect. That's my judgment. So now I'm going to put the judgment down on paper. Jenny speaks to me with disrespect, right? Or even worse, Jenny talks to me like I'm a dog, right? So that's the thought I had when she spoke to me that way. Now... So the question is, is it true? Jenny speaks to me like I'm a dog. Well, I'm in a bad mood, so I'm going to say, yes, it's true. Can I be absolutely sure that it's true? No, I don't know. I'm not in her brain. I don't know what she's thinking. Okay, no. And then the next question is, who would you be without that thought? Who would you be in this moment without the thought that she spoke to me like a dog? I would be happy, in a good mood, guy who loves my wife, talking to my guys on the, on the Skype. 
that's who I would be, right? It's always something like that. Like, you know, Matt doesn't like my songs in the band, right? Well, who would you be without that thought? I'd be happy because other than that, I love the band, right? It's like, okay, so when you get to that third question, then the hard part comes. You got to turn it around. And there's usually three turnarounds you can find, typically. So Jenny talks to me like I'm a dog. Turn it around in one way. One turnaround would be, and he doesn't talk to me like I'm a dog. Jenny loves me. She married me. She, it, she invited me into her life to raise her stepson. You know, she shares her deepest, darkest secrets and vulnerabilities with me. Why would she ever talk to me like a dog? So that's one turnaround. Two is... I speak to Jenny like a dog. How could that be? She's the one with the starly attitude, right? But for me to think that my wife would talk to me like a dog is thinking so little of her that to accuse her of that is talk talking like her talking to her like she's a dog, mm -hmm. right? It's so disrespectful of my, my ego to think such <clears throat> a thing about the woman who gave her life to me, right? So then um, there's the third one, and it's usually the hardest one. Uh, so there's Jenny doesn't talk to me like a dog. I talk to Jenny like she's a dog. The last one, I talk to myself like I'm a dog. Right? What, what in the world would make me think that my wife would talk to me that way. Why would I even tell myself such a thing? I'm telling myself she talks to me like a dog. I'm the one talking to me like a dog. It's not her. It's me. And I'm doing it to myself. And if I indulge in it, I'm going to now do it to her. So Byron, Katie, it's tricky work mm -hmm. because you got to look at yourself like those three questions. you got to do it with every thought, every judgmental thought, right? Um, like my bandmate, you know, uh, pick a bandmate, you know, um, you know, he, he wants to do this certain song in the show. He wants to do this certain song. I could say, man, Jordan only wants to do this certain song in the show. He only cares about his song. That's right. But if it <laughs> bothers me, if it bothers me, then what's happening? I only care about my songs. Yeah. Why would it bother me that he wants to do the song that he sings? Right. Unless I only care about the songs that I want to sing. It's like though. So that again, if so, again, how how we talked when we first started this about using all these different tools. So I can do the work, right? The firing Katie, the work where you turn it around, you turn the judgments around to yourself. I could do that, but I can't do it. Often, if I don't find the space in between, which right. we talked about a little earlier. Right. So that moment when I judge my neighbor, I judge my friend, my bandmate, my spouse, my kid, anyone. When I judge them and say negative thought about that person, find that space. Say, wait a Any time you have a negative thought about someone, find that space and say, wait a minute. What's going on? You know, and then if you can in that space... Do the work, do a turnaround, or just check in with yourself, you know, and say, well, I, I'm really sensitive about what they're doing today. I must, uh, I must <laughs> be in a bad mood, you yeah. know, shit. Or, or if you can't do it simply as that, do the work, do those turnarounds really quick. And sometimes it's a process because it's hard to really do that. And it's hard to confront yourself. It is hard. Our egos, our, our, our uh, imposter voices are so strong. Yeah. They'll say, no, I ain't doing the work. I'm not doing it. Why don't they do it? That's the first thing you get. If I'm going to do these turnarounds on me, she should do it to herself. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's like our ego will find every way to keep us in this asleep state. But if you can find the space between and do that work, eventually it becomes so easy. It's like it becomes so easy that... You can watch a TV show like a 90 Day Fiance or something or The Bachelor <laughs> and you see them talking about another person in the house and you'd be like, oh, wow, she should turn that around. Oh, wow, he should turn that around. Right. And also when someone says something to you or you say it about someone else, you can instantly turn it around. And and, you know, it's like, um, oh, that guy's an idiot. 
you know, that governor's a fool. You know, he's just doing this. I'm a fool. You know, he, I, that governor's a fool. He hasn't even done the research on COVID-19. Well, I'm a fool. I haven't done enough research on COVID-19. I could do more and maybe I'll know what he's talking about and be actually able to better engage with him in my disagreement with him. Right. So it's, it's all these judgments can be turned around if we're willing to humble ourselves and, and do it. And it's it's really powerful. Byron Katie, B-Y-R-O-N Katie. There's like they're so good. And, and you know, she does it in a way where like you can look like Byron Katie on relationships, Byron Katie on politics. She does them on like the president and stuff. It's like crazy. Like you'd be like. And it's not, it doesn't make you, um, it doesn't mean people are right, but it's up to them to change. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean like, you know, it, uh, the, the flip side of the work is find the truth in it, right? So if I tell, tell, I keep using my wife as a simple, like we have problems. <laughs> we don't, we're really great. We work so hard and we're so in love. But if I tell her a judgment, you know, um, or she says to me, you know, you're being a real jerk. It's easy for me to say, hey, go turn that around. Right. The, the flip side of it is I would say to her, OK, I'll 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 take a look at that. I'll, I'll do some self-reflection and see if I'm being a jerk and I hear you and I respect what you're saying. Let me work on that. And I invite you to do the same. I invite you to work on that yourself so that I'm telling her. In a nice way, maybe you can go do the work and consider if I'm really a jerk. Because I, I don't think I'm a jerk to you. I would never intentionally be a jerk to you. But I understand you might be thinking I'm a jerk right now. So I'm going to take a look at that. And maybe we can meet up in an hour and see if we can see what we've both learned about each ourselves. See if we can figure this out. That's some heavy shit, though. It is. The work is heavy. It's heavy duty, man. It's like people go in, I hate this person they're a jerk they do this they sabotage me and they literally leave like wow okay it's me sabotaging myself and it doesn't you know it's not like you got to suddenly change who you are it's not compromising it's getting in touch with your judgments and your ego and getting it in check and that actually empowers you to free yourself of the stress of other people right it's like it's like you know um we put ourselves in these tortured, stressful states by indulging in all this negative thoughts and negative stuff. And then we blame the other people for doing it to us. You know, it's like, you know, my wife makes me miserable. No, you make you miserable. You make you miserable. It's not her. You know, it's, it's always us. The governor Pritzker got me in here in a cage. Like, you know, he's the governor of Illinois. Governor Pritzker has me in a prison in my house and, and like I'm an animal in a cage. No, he doesn't. I do. I can work out. I can read a book. I could spend time with my kids. I could go for a jog. I could do so many things to help myself and love myself. He doesn't. He, he's, he's, he's doing this situation. He's made his decision and I'm living with it. But he doesn't have me in a prison. I got myself in a mental prison right now by trying to not do something for myself and just stay mad at him. Who's put me in a prison? Me. Yeah, man. Preach. Preach, preach, preach. Um, you know, it, you use the word tricky, right? All of these exercises are tricky. But nothing good comes easy, like you said. Nothing, yeah. nothing that we love comes without hard work. And the biggest challenge is ourselves and the people that we love the most. Those are the people that we have the ability to treat the worst or the ability to treat the best if we focus on ourselves in order to do that, right? And that, that, right. that, that brings us back to the initial point. So there's two things I want to, I want to bring up and I want to be respectful of your time. So we're going to wrap up shortly, but I'm one, the one talking. talking oh, no, for two it's hours. good. It's good. It's not you guys. It's me. Sorry. No, please don't. Um, one thing I noticed at the very beginning that I thought was great that I think, for whatever reason, stuck with me throughout this whole conversation. When Jenny brought you the protein shakes, you said, Thank you. I love you. So many people would just say, Thanks. Right? And they would sort of 
maybe just not really acknowledge that act of love from her to bring you your protein shakes. You're acknowledging that. That's something that I took away just from that small thing that I can learn from to make sure that I acknowledge all of the little teeny things on a daily basis that my wife or my friends or my coworkers or people that I deal with are doing for me. And being able to express a very quick note of gratitude or love is huge. So it's nice. It was just really nice to see you practicing essentially what you're preaching and meaning it really looking like you're meaning it. And, and after this conversation, of course, knowing even more that you mean it, but, um, I thought that was really pretty, really beautiful just to see that. And it, it, it resonated something so simple. Um, and three words in that way. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that up because it, it stood out. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Hey, you know, it's, uh, that's, uh, it's, it, it's not a practice. It's just, uh, but in some ways it is, you know, in some ways it is, um, because like, uh, you know, th- uh, I don't know, like a week ago she was doing one of these, she was super engaged and it was, um, with this sort of, uh, guru that, that we both like. And so she was like this and I came in and brought her a water and she didn't even look at me. Right now, again, it's one of those things that could have happened 20 times in the last week. Right. But for whatever reason on that day, it really bothered me. You didn't look at me. Why? You didn't even acknowledge me. Right. So I came up with a judgment <clears throat> and I went and worked on it in the other room and I brought it up and I felt stupid for bringing it up. And that's my ego again. Now, now I want to, my ego wants to shame me into being like, she. now she's really not going to look at you because you were so dumb to think she wouldn't look at you on purpose, right? But what I did is I got vulnerable. I did the work on it, which I just talked about the turnaround. I formed a sentence of a judgment and then turned it around to myself. And then I said, make it a practice. You know, do you ever not look at her when she comes in the room? Are you ever on Instagram a little too distracted? You know, to not notice her, I'm sure it's happened, man. So don't confront her. Fix you. Fix you. And don't, don't, don't celebrate it either. When she comes in and gives me the shake, now I don't go upstairs and gloat and say, you notice I did not tell you I love you. No, (laughs) just do it, man. Just be, be about it. If you think someone is doing something that isn't the best way to be, don't judge them. Be that. Be better. You know, be better and do it yourself. And you might be surprised at the results because they might actually join you. And again, why wouldn't I want her to be engaged and get like I, I'm fully engaged with you guys right now. She was fully engaged in what she was doing. Why wouldn't I want that? She's doing it to make herself mentally and spiritually better. Like you I'm going to sit there and throw a tantrum about that shit. Like mm-hmm. I should be embracing it and welcoming it and go do six more hours on the computer, baby. And don't ever look at me when I come in the room. I want you to be the best you you can be. Mm-hmm. But our ego and our imposter voice will tell us, no, that ain't good. And it's, it's bullshit. It's yeah. a bullshit. It's a, ego is a, whew. it's a doozy. It's, it's, you know, people say, yeah, well, people say the ego is, He's got a big ego. He thinks he's the best. He thinks he's, you know, better than everyone else. No, man, it's the opposite, but it's worse. It's worse than that. Our egos think we're less than everyone else. Our egos think we're less and that they know the best and that they're going to tell us the way to salvation is to destroy our friendships and our relationships and leave us alone. And I'm telling you, the ego's such a scoundrel when we're all alone. (laughs) It's going to say, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> you should have listened to me. Yep, yeah. You'd have all the friends in the world. Yep. <laughs> well, man, th- this has been a, an incredibly valuable conversation, um, not just for, for me and I'm sure Jordan and Justin, but for the people that are going to listen to this, there's a lot of great wisdom, a lot of great nuggets, and there's many that people can take away from this that I think um, – we accomplished what we set out to do and thank you for being so gracious with your words, your experience and your time. Um, the last thing I want to just 
present to you is, you know, is there anything in particular, um, you know, that you want to share or say or tell people to do or call to action or anything um, for our listeners? I, I want to make sure that I give you that chance as well because um, you've been so gracious with us. Well, you know what? <clears throat> as you were talking, I did think of one more thing. And uh, let me go in my iBooks. This book is, uh, it's, you can heal yourself by Louise Hay. It's called Louise Hay is like, um, she's a daily affirmation woman. She passed away recently. Rest in peace, Louise Hay. But, um, her book, you can heal yourself. This is one last thing. It's a lot of information I'm dropping on people today, but I can't get the cover of the book, but it's called, let me be specific. You can heal your life okay. by Louise Hay. I made a note. So Louise so we'll, Hay, we'll share it in the, in the, in the notes for sure. Yeah. I have nothing to promote but love. And this book <clears throat> is another little wrinkle in the toolbox. In the back of the book, it's all these elements and things that you can go and it'll say sore back. Like you ever get up and your back is killing you and it hurts all day. You don't know why. You got a sore throat. All these different things. Now, if you get really, really sick, you know, of course, this is a little beyond that, but all these things, I do this all the time. So, if, okay, if I have a really bad back, and Jenny taught me about this, um, if I have a really, like my back all of a sudden goes out, you go in the book in the back and it'll say back pain. And you scroll through it and it'll tell you what in your life is causing you back pain oh, externally. Wow. And then it'll give you a mantra to say, and I'm telling you, if you, it's one of those things you got to get honest. You can't listen to your ego or your imposter voice. You got to say, <clears throat> all right. So an example, I got a phone call one time. I'm walking into the park. And I'm walking out of the grocery store. I get a phone call and like, I don't know, somebody threatened to sue me. And by the time I got in the car, my back was out. Mm. And I said, fuck. <clears throat> and I said, wait a minute. A money or a threat, an external threat came to me. And typically the back pain is caused by um, not feeling supported or concerns about the future or money or something like that. I said, shit, that's why my back went out. So I, I read it. I thought about it. I got still with it. And I did the mantra a few times. My back felt better. Hmm. I'm telling you. It's like <clears throat> a lot of times we get a sore throat. We get a lot of times a sore throat. When we're in a disagreement with people and <clears throat> you're not speaking up and using your voice, a lot of times throat will get shut down. You notice if there's drama in the group, like Spencer might all of a sudden his voice is out, whatever. It may be some, I'm not saying that he sings hard, you know what I mean? But typically it's like, oh man, my throat's all messed up. It's like there's a disagreement somewhere. There's a chasm somewhere happening in your life. And if you can get still with it and find it and be honest with it, a lot of times you can, these little pains and stuff, my neck hurts, my arm hurts. Why the hell does my arm hurt all of a sudden today? It's like, it's typically connected to something going on in our life, some type of crisis or trauma that we can fix it. You know, I, I mean, you know, if you get hit by a car, there's nothing you could do about it, right? You get a, two broken legs. It is what it is. But Typically, all this stuff is connected to what we're dealing with, and there's a physical consequence to the suffering that we put on ourselves and the stress we put on ourselves. So that's just another thing just for people to be mindful of. Just check it out. Try it out on yourself. Like if you get the book, you, you start, you know, you get, a, you get a, a whatever. You break out in acne or something like, you know, I had acne as a teenager, so... The stress of acne always made it, my acne worse. I know it did. Um, but just check it out and see. It's not going to heal you from disease and this, that, and the other. But it, it just typical little ailments and stuff that we deal with, it's usually caused by what we're suffering through in our life. And that suffering is usually caused, as we've all talked about, by this, the games and stress we put on ourselves in our own minds. That's, that's brilliant. Yeah, I have a note here. Um, we'll definitely share that. I'm going to look into it myself. I'm sure you guys will too. I haven't heard of that book or that author. So um, that's fascinating because it's funny. I, I I got some information today about taxes. You mentioned money and my, my jaw started to hurt. My back started to hurt a little bit. So it's like, oh man, okay. 
So now I'm going to look at that. I'm going to write, what happens when you get your tax bill? <laughs> so The judgments, the judgments, the, the ego bumps, the anger, yep. the triggers, you know, triggers. Triggers is often, it's our experience is what we're reacting to, yeah. right? Sometimes, sometimes someone is an asshole and does say something really rude and it should be offensive. But sometimes somebody didn't mean something to you and they say something and it triggers you. It's triggering past trauma or future fear. Yep. It's not of the present moment. Food. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. I love you. I've talked a lot about you. I hope you're not mad. <laughs> <laughs> all good stuff all good stuff um well no that that's that's awesome and thank you for for sharing that um donnie thank you for your time seriously um we really appreciate it i know that our listeners will love this too and they'll take a lot from it um we will be in touch i'll get you you know a, a, a copy of this audio and video to check out if you want to or if you want to share but we'll certainly put the good word out there i'm going to turn it over to jordan who takes us out but man thank you again for your time jordan go thank for it. you guys hope i didn't talk too much no no, 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 no you, you brought it you brought a ton of value i own that book i've done a ton of work for years on exploring my body and learning the wisdom that it holds our stress what's created here what's created outside of us uh the wisdom is within our bodies our body holds the wisdom uh, and, it, and it's far smarter and wise than what goes through here so I've learned that through all kinds of different practices, the more I can get honest and open and in touch with what the wisdom of my body is telling me, whether it's uh, a stomach ache or the sensation of anxiety, uh, there is wisdom in that. It is there to protect me. So, um, look, I, I, I so appreciate what, what, how you use the, the privilege of your hard-earned platform to share concepts like this, to spread love. Um, so much love and respect for that. Uh, the way I want to go out, I was, I was looking around your Instagram in preparation for this conversation, and, and a handful of posts back, you shared a quick video from 1991. And uh, it, was, it was like a news clip, and, and the reporter was maybe asking you something like, or saying that uh, yes, some of your yeah. fans uh, were saying they didn't like you as much this year as they did last, last year. And your response was, okay, I get that. I don't like some of the toys uh, you know, when I was six years old, as much as I did when I was five years old, uh, that, that, that showed at least in that moment of your life, uh, the foundation of the self love that you provide, uh, the, your sense of self, you you don't need it externally. If you can give it to yourself, if you can love yourself, take care of yourself. That's what puts you in a position to give it back to your wife, yeah. to your fans, to your family, etc. cetera. Um, so I, I thought that one clip, uh, really, showed uh, just such insight uh, many, many years ago about how you are designed here and in here. Thank you. It, it's, it was an awake moment then. I'm sure I had a lot of not so great moments back then, but uh, I, I did look back on it and go, all right, all right. I was on the path and I'm, I'm still on it. It takes work, but uh, I just, to everyone out there, you know, I won't give up on the path. So don't give up either. Just you be happy. It's really a choice. You just got to choose to work to, to, to achieve it and you can have it no matter what's going on in your life. You can find happiness. Just got to find it here. Well said. All right. So much thanks again, my friend. We appreciate Thank you your guys time. so much. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. Thank you so much for even thinking of me. Of course. Uh, of course. This is great. So to take us out, we're, we know there's a lot of people paying attention who haven't before. Facebook.com slash groups slash chocolate croissants. It's our private inclusive, supportive, positive Facebook group. We invite you to join us. Um, and until next time, please yes, be sir. kind to yourself and uh, bye-bye.